Hello, welcome to Furious Tea Break, and now it's time for a quick update on the solar panels, which a lot of people have been very interested in dealing. I didn't want to do one immediately afterwards because it wouldn't really have told us anything new because the panels had only just gone on the roof at the time of the last video, but now we've had them since the beginning of October. We can talk about how much power we've been using, how much we've been saving, and see what kind of power we've been generating from an 11 panel, 4.6 kilowatt hour peak setup in a standard normal domestic house here in South East England. Well, First of all, has it been a success? Would I recommend it? Short answer, yes, absolutely. Here on the inverter right now, I can tell you that at about two o'clock in the afternoon, and we are now on the 14th of December, when it's been a very cold, late, dark start to the day, we've got 27% of battery power. The panels are currently producing 0.49 kilowatt hours into the inverter. They're putting 0.24 kilowatt hours into the battery to store for nighttime use. The house is using virtually nothing at the moment because everything's turned off apart from like the internet router and that kind of basic stuff. So it's not even registering anything with that right now. And we're exporting 0.21 kilowatt hours into the grid. In fact, the power has actually just gone up to 0.54 kilowatt hours off the panels. So yeah, even on a dull day, they're quite productive. But the big question for a lot of people is the money aspect because we're paying a loan for these things rather than buying them for cash because they're nine and a half thousand pounds. And my reasoning was the monthly loan payment on these panels will be less than the electricity bill as power keeps going up. And the question is, did that pay off? Well, end of October, we got our first bill from uh, Octopus Energy and they had an estimated bill reading for us of 137 pounds, which was something of a shock. Um, they also gave us an estimated annual usage of 1500 pounds for this house with a family of three in it. And uh, yeah, that was also something of a shock. However, then I gave them a meter reading showing what we'd actually used rather than their estimate. And that one month cost us five pounds. We used five pounds worth of electricity in October on top of our electricity generated here on the roof. So that was a success. October was a relatively bright month, so that was quite good. It wasn't as good as the summer month, obviously, but for an autumnal month, I was quite pleased with that. November wasn't quite as good. It was a darker month, the weather was worse, the days were shorter, and as well as that, I was doing a bit of welding. So that's a pretty heavy power draw. So that was something I hadn't been doing in October. So I was expecting to have used a bit more power just thanks to that. Anyway, so I sent in the meter reading at the end of November and they billed us 15 pounds. So yeah, over two months, October and November, I had to pay Octopus Energy 20 pounds. So a monthly payment for the panels is 110 pounds. So in October, it was a reasonable win. In November, it was a small win. December, who knows what that's gonna be because the days have been even shorter. And uh, obviously we've got the lights on a lot more. So we're using a lot more power around the house. So we'll find out how we stand in December. But come the summertime, we're barely gonna be using the grid at all. So it'll be interesting to check back in a few months time when the sun comes out and it's actually nice and warm. The snow doesn't really seem to have been much of an issue for the panels, whether they're coated so that it drifts off it or they seem to get warm and melts off. They have cleared very, very quickly compared to the rest of the roof. And they've also added an extra layer of insulation to the house. So it hasn't been quite as chilly upstairs as it might otherwise have been. One aspect which we haven't really touched on yet is selling power back into the grid. There have been a number of delays getting that sorted out, but my phone app tells me that based on the estimated pence per unit that we'll be sending back into the grid, we should have exported 482 pounds worth of power back into the grid. And as we've only had the panels for three months, there'll be a profit of 150 pounds just on having them on the roof and not using any power. That's down to paperwork issues. We're meant to be getting something called an eddy, which controls our hot water tank because we've got an immersion hot water tank, which we don't really use at the moment. We're on gas central heating and gas hot water, but that would mean we could divert some of the solar power to warm hot water for us during the daytime. So we use less gas as well. That didn't turn up, it was out of stock. So I withheld the final payment because I didn't want them to kind of forget about us. They, on the other hand, though, were withholding the paperwork for us because they hadn't had the final payment. And this kind of went on to a bit of a, a stalemate of nothing happening for a while until eventually they agreed to take the Eddie's cost off our overall bill. I made the final payment to that point and then they'd look into the Eddie as an after payment. So we've now got the paperwork in hand. So any day now, we should finally, after about 10 weeks, start getting paid. It's annoying we've lost so much money in terms of money being paid back into the grid, but thankfully that will be starting soon. Now we have made a few changes to our own lifestyle in order to try and make the most of the solar panels. We haven't just carried on as normal before. Typical dad, I'm going around turning lights off all the time, making sure doors are shut, lights are turned off, TVs aren't left on in rooms where no one's there, that kind of thing, much to everyone else's annoyance. But 
that only uses a small amount. There's other things we've done as well. We used to put the dishwasher and the washing machine on as and when we needed them. So finish dinner in the evening, load the dishwasher, start it up, off it goes. Now because of the drawer of a thing like that, it would use power from the battery and from the grid. So now we just wait until it's light. And the same situation with the washing machine. Now with both of those devices, we wait until it's bright outside. That means we're taking power from the battery and from the panels and maybe only a small amount from the grid to run them. So we've reduced our power consumption and our reliance on the grid in that respect. Another thing we've done, and Mrs. Furious is responsible for this one, we've jumped into the air fryer revolution. And this is an amazing device because it uses so little power compared to a conventional oven and you can cook almost everything in it that you would do in a regular oven but at a fraction of the power usage you don't spend 20 minutes or half an hour waiting for things to heat up to temperature you just turn it on and it's there you don't have to heat a great big box for one small item you just heat the small box with the small item in it it's brilliant so we've saved power in that respect as well so overall yes we are still saving money with it come the summertime we'll be saving a lot more money and when the paperwork finally happens, we'll actually be making money on the system. So this is definitely a worthwhile thing to do. Here in the southeast of England, we easily have enough daylight to make it work. It's now two o'clock in the afternoon and the battery has got 27% power in it, which for an evening of just watching TV, putting the lights on, that will probably be enough for us not to use any power off the grid whatsoever. Today's usage, I put the washing machine on first thing when it was still a little bit dark in the sky. And so we've imported five kilowatt hours, but we've also exported two kilowatt hours. So so on balance, we've only used three kilowatt hours off the grid. The app is telling me that today we've yielded nearly four kilowatt hours in total, but this year, which is back to the beginning of October, we've actually produced 689 kilowatt hours of power from our roof, which is a phenomenal amount of electricity. Something I was talking about with the installer when he was here was adding more panels onto the garage roof. Normally, you can only have one direction of, of panels, ideally as close to south facing as possible, but he actually commented that when he was up on the roof, he noticed that the garage roof, because of the angle it's at compared to the house, was in full sun most of the day as well. He reckons we could probably get another four panels up there, giving us a total of 15 panels. We could export even more power. If we had an electric car here, we could charge that more easily, maybe get a second battery, and it's definitely worth doing for the long run. So, quick update on how we're going on with solar panels and the answer is really good i 100 recommend if you're thinking about it and you can do it it's definitely worth it okay hope this has been interesting thanks for watching and don't forget to head back over to the main channel for regular car stuff and head over to furiousdriving.co.uk for furious calendars magnets of all the cars hats like these because it's very chilly today t-shirts mugs all kinds of other stuff anyway thank you for watching i'll see you again soon